Did you know that it was believed Hephaestus crafted in workshops underneath volcanoes? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about an often overlooked god, but who was an important deity for the craftsmen of ancient Greece. Today, we are diving into the god of metallurgy and fire, Hephaestus. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week, so make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. Hephaestus is the Olympian god of metallurgy, smiths, craftsmen and fire, and is the blacksmith for the Olympian gods. In fact, many of the myths associated with Hephaestus have him crafting something, whether it be for his own use or because another deity has requested it. Hephaestus did his crafting in workshops underneath volcanoes, with Mount Etna on Sicily being his favourite, and to the Romans he was known as Vulcan. Something that made Hephaestus really stand out from his fellow Olympian gods was the fact that, unlike all of those perfect, beautiful deities, he was described very differently. Homer in his Iliad describes the god as limping with shrunken legs, cripple foot god, and the lame one. And in the Odyssey, Hephaestus himself says that he was a cripple from his birth. Hephaestus is the son of Hera, sometimes on her own, in retaliation for the birth of Athena by Zeus on his own, or with the Titan goddess Metis, and sometimes as the son of Zeus, especially since Hephaestus is noted as being the one who split Zeus's head with an axe to allow Athena to leave his skull. After his birth, and depending on the version you're reading, Hephaestus is thrown from Mount Olympus by either Hera for being ugly or crippled, or by Zeus. He landed on the island of Lemnos, and was cared for there by Thetis, and perhaps also Eurynome, the daughter of Oceanus. Perhaps the physical appearance of Hephaestus was a reflection of the harsh realities of the life of a blacksmith, where repeated hammering and toxic fumes could take a toll on both the mind and the body. In art, he is usually depicted in a workman's tunic or exomis, or a pilos, which is a workman's hat. He is often holding his tools of the trade, including an axe, hammer, tongs, a saw or a chisel, and he is sometimes depicted riding a mule side saddle. Hephaestus riding a mule this way is a reference to his lameness, a feature of the god which is not often depicted in Greek art, though there are a few Attic vases that show his feet pointing backwards. It is unsurprising, considering this association with the mule and his occupation as a blacksmith, that his sacred animal is the donkey and his symbol is a hammer and tongs. Hephaestus is married to the goddess of love and beauty, Aphrodite, which may seem like an odd couple, but the marriage only came about after Hephaestus captured his mother in a golden throne, and the price of her release was Aphrodite's hand in marriage. So, given that he wasn't exactly Aphrodite's ideal choice of husband, she had numerous affairs with the god Ares and many other of the Olympian gods, as well as mortals, that Hephaestus never seems to have known about. In Book 8 of the Odyssey, though, we hear of how Aphrodite and Ares were caught together by Hephaestus in a very compromising position. Helios, the titan of the sun, told Hephaestus of the lovers, and so the god of metallurgy decided to spy on the cheaters himself, and then come up with a plan to completely humiliate the pair. He crafted an invisible net of chains around his bed, and the next day, when Ares and Aphrodite lay down together, they became entwined in the trap, and Hephaestus called all of the Olympian gods to witness the spectacle, which had the gods roaring with laughter. Many of the myths associated with Hephaestus have him crafting something for someone, much like his invisible bed chains. In the Iliad, Thetis, the mother of Achilles, 
has Hephaestus craft her son a new set of armor and a shield of gold, silver, bronze, and tin, which was decorated with various mythological scenes. Many of the Olympian gods have some sort of magical attire, and it was Hephaestus who created all of these, including Zeus's scepter and Aegis, the helmet of Hades, and the secret locking doors of Hera's chamber. It was even by Hephaestus' hands that the first mortal woman, Pandora, was sculpted out of clay. Another craft of Hephaestus was the automatons, gold people and animals that were intelligent and could speak. He also made the bronze automaton Talos for King Minos of Crete, and watchdogs for the King of Phaeacia, Alcanus. Hephaestus didn't have too many public temples dedicated to him throughout Greece, but was probably worshipped by craftsmen in small-scale rituals. His two main cult centres, though, were the city-state of Athens and the island of Lemnos, and he was also revered at sites where fires occurred naturally, such as Caria and Lycia. Not to mention his general association with volcanoes, since the god was thought to have his workshop beneath them. In Athens, Hephaestus shared a temple dedicated to the other deity responsible for crafts, Athena, and this temple in the Agora of Athens, known as the Hephaestion, still stands today as one of the best preserved temples in the Greek world. The Doric temple was built in circa 449 BCE and would have once held large bronze statues of Hephaestus and Athena. According to Sophocles, during the Chalkia festival, which was an annual festival honouring the two gods, blacksmiths would have marched through the city of Athens carrying their tools. Once every five years, Athena and Hephaestus were honoured during the spectacular Hephaestia festival, which involved extravagant sacrifices to the two deities and torchlight parades. Lemnos was believed to be one of the spots where Hephaestus landed after being thrown off Mount Olympus, so it's no surprise that this was one of his major cult centres. The island had a sanctuary dedicated to him, and the god even gave his name to the city of Hephaestia. The Bay of Mudros, which means mass of molten lead, is a spot on Lemnos that is specifically linked to Hephaestus and his craft. Although he did not have the same status as many of the more famous gods, Hephaestus did have his admirers, and even among his fellow immortals, was regarded as the always dependable master craftsman. Can you think of similar gods in the mythologies of other cultures? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more at apricusclothing.ca or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you soon with another video.